from whence comes the purpose of a person's life? Come it by chance, a casting of the lot, or does a call of destiny beckon to each of us? Many have wondered about my little Hadassah and why a simple Jewish orphan was chosen to stand against the annihilation of her people. And yet the mystery of the girl most known as Esther begins not where one might think, but 500 years earlier with a single act of disobedience. King Saul of the Israelites had been sent by the prophet Samuel to wipe out an ancient child-sacrificing enemy. So pervasive was their evil that not even their oxen nor sheep were to be spared. And above all, no survivors left breathing. My lord, I give you Agag, king of the Amalekites. We have also seized for you his livestock, even his queen. Portents bid me haste across this land of ours. How would you accuse me now, O prophet? I carried out your lord's command. Then why do my ears ring with the lowing of oxen and the bleating of sheep? Your majesty, the Amalekite queen. She's escaped. We have the king. What is one woman? You fool. She is with child. <laughs> The prophet Samuel put a swift end to King Agag. Agag's queen, fleeing with a seed of vengeance growing within her, the Jews never found. Rebecca, what kind of housekeeper do you think you are? Serves you right for bringing home your work. The caravan arrived this morning. Well, Susa is the capital of the known world. Caravans arrive every day. Not from Jerusalem. Mm. Well, perhaps you ought to go back and ask them if they'll arrive at the same time next year. Next year? You promised. Rebecca! Fight your own battles. You don't pay me enough to fight the battle for you. Good morning, Adassa. And where have you been? I'm sorry, Grandmother. The market's really busy. There's a new caravan in from... Uh... Shh. Saw a subject? Uncle Mordecai, does not your own heart long to see our people restored to glory? It does. Did not Sirius the Great conquer Babylon and free our people from captivity? He did. And do we embrace our freedom and leave this pagan empire to embrace our destiny? Of course not. Oh, Lord. I pray to you day and night to give me the patience of Job. Give me the wisdom of Solomon. And what do you give me? You give me the endless equivocations of a beautiful young woman. <laughs> A 
does. Always dreaming. Maybe. Here then, you be the princess. <laughs> While many Jews had forgotten the acts of centuries past, the descendants of Agag had not. For Agag's queen did indeed survive, and gave birth to a son. And she forged for him a mark, prophesying that one day an Agagite would arise, a descendant of Agag, who would finally exact vengeance upon the Jews. King Saul said to David, You cannot go before this Goliath, for you are but a youth. David replied, While keeping my father's sheep, there came a lion and a bear, and I slew them both. This Goliath shall be as one of them, for he defied the armies of the Lord. As will Jesse ben Joseph, should he but take one step closer. little but random news I bear. I judge that. Rumor has it, Queen Vashti plans not to attend the king's banquet this evening. In protest of the war, apparently the king has no idea. <laughs> Some see random news, others opportunities. Of course, this is why you are a dispatch rider, and I am a prince of the face. Tell me, Ekegaitum, what do you do with the extra darks you can hide from me? I have ten sons, my lord. And a wife that makes many demands. <laughs> ten sons! You serve the great king well. Come, come. Go you now. Speak of me as you lavish your wife and sons. Happy birthday, Hadassah. A stone ball? <laughs> Remember, Hadassah, it is the glory of God to conceal the matter, the honor of kings to seek it out. It's from the Promised Land. Your great-grandmother brought it with her. And like you, its true treasure is etched within. Reconsider my proposition. There is much need for leadership in Jerusalem. More stew, my lord. I don't suppose that in your entire caravan you have a cook one half as good as our Rebecca. Here you are but a poor palace scribe, one who passes as a Persian at that. Are you a Jew, or have you become a Gentile? We are a small people, caught up in a vast and violent empire. 
We have capricious princes who could order our annihilation with a flick of a finger. And your presence in the palace might prevent it? Probably not. Look, tell me what I want to hear about. Tell me about Matilda. Ah, what ecstasy to stand in the presence of the Almighty, like the intimate embrace of a husband and wife. It's so much deeper than mere mortal love. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> came to pass in the days of King Xerxes, who ruled over the empire of the Medes and Persians from Ethiopia to India, that in the third year of his reign, he decreed a season of feasting. Rumors of war were in the wind, however, and some thought this the king's way of storing off a much debated decision to march on Greece in retaliation for his father's death four years before. Queen Vasti, your majesty. Enter. The night's festivities hold not your interest, either. It is long since you summoned me here. have not been idle. Not idle. Not gifted either. But later, Hadassah, we will discuss this later. I have run out of laters. The caravan leaves tomorrow. Did not the priest even say it would be good for me? That he would look after me? You have so much of your mother and father in you, you know. And perhaps I'm just being a very selfish old man. Do you really want to go to Jerusalem? Truly. Then go with my blessing. <laughs> Thank you. Rebecca. <laughs> yes, well, I, I will be late coming back tonight. Uh, the uh, feasting has been extended. All Susa is invited. All of Susa? A drunken brawl is no place for a young lady of purity. Then why is a good Jew like you going? All the scribes have to go. There is war in the air. why the princes have asked you to extend the feast another night. You are too late if you seek me to deny them. Especially now, with such clamoring to march upon Greece and avenge my father's death. How long have you dreamt of molding Persia into a pillar of learning and culture? A flame to make even the greatness of Greece but a shadow. You know as well as I, this is not something that is won in battle, but in the hearts of men. You would have me do nothing then. You no warrior, no soldier. I'd have you stay. Enhance your kingdom. Preserve your throne.
looking for someone? I'm fine, thank you. You can run back to Rebecca now. Oh, I'm sure you're fine. Only tell me, Adasa, or whoever you are, how do you intend to get into the palace? You didn't come to take me back. Come, or I should call you Adasa the Mouse. I appear to you by the gracious command of the great King of Kings, the Emperor of the World, Xerxes, son of Darius. Ten thousand, but I fear I would soon have to send them out to conquer new vineyards for me. <laughs> <laughs> then let us drink to Queen Vashti, the most beautiful in the land. Drink for Vashti! Vashti! They're serious? I demand Vashti be here before. Already rumors circulate as to why the queen holds her own feast instead of attending yours. They sound riotous, my lord. They fear a divided kingdom. My lord, you know the queen's position on the wall. Send for her. When they go to fetch the queen, she must be lovely. Reigning in a place such as this. None is more lovely than you. My queen. My thanks, fair prince. Prince? Why is it for years you uh, threatened to join the caravan to Jerusalem, yet you never do? What holds you back? Perhaps the courage to face it alone. What if you had someone to join you? The Herald returns! The Queen asks the King's forgiveness. She cannot be her guest. I'm Queen, not a pawn, and I will not lower my dignity. No shame my reign by wearing the royal crown before you're drunk and thinly veiled war council. What news of the Queen? Where is our Queen? Am I to be a mockery before my subjects? Or Greece as well. Continue, cousin. Might not this deed of refusal travel abroad to all women, making their husbands contemptible in their eyes? Will not it be said by all Xerxes commanded his wife to come before him, but she came not? Vashti is guilty not only of disobedience to the crown, but against the protocol of our fathers. And tell me. What dictates the protocol? A royal edict must be issued and written into the laws of the land that Vashti... that Vashti come no more before the king, but that her royal position be given to a new queen more worthy than her. My lord, what answer do I send the queen? The land has no more queen.
were assembled and a decree sent forth. The princes did indeed press upon Xerxes. The king, soon to depart for war, leave behind a queen to keep the people unified. Every maiden was to be considered, the choicest of whom to be brought from across the empire and into the palace. with the protocol, young men were also rounded up to become eunuchs who would serve the queen's candidates during their time of preparation. There's no need for alarm. In all likelihood, they will not come for you. And not all that are taken will be chosen. Doubtless the queen has already been selected through bribery or chicanery. How do I keep our laws? How do I pray? What excuse do I offer God for not keeping his commandments? Oh, Hadassah. God sees the inward observance. The court is a dangerous place. I think it would be better if you forgot that you were a Jew. If this is a sin, then, then, then let it be on my head. Promise me that you will do that if you're taken. Promise me that. If I am taken, I will do as you say. I should give you a different name. Hadassah is too Jewish. Esther. Esther is a good Babylonian name. Yes, that's what we shall call you from now on. Esther of Susa. Hm. Promise me. Promise me if you are taken. I said if I am taken. If, if, if. But for now, you should look for me on the streets of Jerusalem. Dancing. Like David before the glory of the Lord. Ha Hadassah! Who? Show us favor. Turn these dungeons into some place wonderful. Is this the dungeon part or the wonderful part? wonderful in your life. Nana, was it not made for you? Am I never going to see my mother again? Only if you wish not to. Two, three days and 
Who knows? Home you go. <laughs> you think me not beautiful enough to be asked to stay, Hadassa? Welcome to a brand new life. The method of your arrival was not of my choosing. I am Hagar, His Majesty's Royal Yuna. I have been assigned to oversee your preparation. <laughs> you have a very bad habit. The palace is no place for children. You think of me as a child? Well, you are wrong. I'm much younger than that. <laughs> How do they call you? Esther. Curious name. From where do you come? I am of the wind, whose sound is heard, yet none can tell from whence it comes or where it goes. <laughs> well, we gather within the harbor. Try not to blow away before then. Another 4,000 talents for metal, weapons, armor. And we must not forget the pay of the mercenaries. I know this is not a favored opinion, but if used for peaceful purposes, such amounts could serve many needs. Two different ways of life are involved. The Greeks have no king and they want none. It is one thing to beat our chests and parade our borders pretending this is still the empire of our fathers. But you hear the costs of an actual campaign. If we are not honest with ourselves, I fear we lose much more than just our statue. Then let us sit back and do nothing. Let the Greeks conquer. Let them establish democracy. Would not the king be the first to suffer, the first to die? Or does the memory of his father's death not stir as deep in his bones as it does in ours? I speak to you as one not without empathy. I too have stood in the battle and stared into the unknown for the very sword that took my eye, took from me my manhood as well. But be at peace. This is no warfare you embark upon. This is only the life that a great dreamer could imagine. Or at least it can be, if you so choose to embrace it. whispered orchestrations that night, and how you drew even me into your scheme. In these troubled times, it is easy to name any man traitor. I even recall a certain campaign, and I earlier under King Darius, where someone allowed the defeated Greeks to keep their own form of government, their democracy, instead of placing the protocol of the empire in control, favoring democracy, the very doctrine to which all Persia is opposed. I followed orders. Come, come, come. 
trouble ourselves with foolish things. The king asked me to speak, and I did. I obeyed. With suspicion and mistrust creeping into the palace halls, Haman the Agagite found the opportunity he had been waiting for. He began to strike out more openly at the Jews living in the outlying land, painting them as the true Greek sympathizers, setting the stage for his ultimate act of vengeance. I am curious. To whether you frustrate me out of sincerity, or to assure that you never chosen queen. You assume I actually care about being chosen queen. I am serious. Serious of what? Finding a real queen? Is that why you subject us to these beauty treatments, these classes? You do not like our fine instructors? They simply neglect to teach us some things. Such as? Well, seemingly anything to do with actually being queen. The thought well thought, the word well spoken, and the deed well done. As it is said in the great books. You read? In many tongues. <laughs> Before I received your invitation, I was reading of Gilgamesh and the Babylonian. <laughs> <laughs> and Utana Nishtam spoke to Gilgamesh, saying, Gilgamesh. You look worn out and exhausted. What can I do so that you can return to your land? I will tell you a thing that is hidden. There is a plant whose thorns will prick your hand like a rose. If your hands reach this plant, you will become a young man again. You read. There are a few pleasures left in one such as I. You offer us Hegai's position, my lord? If we grant you the privilege of picking a queen? Miss Gath of Persepolis. Miss Gath? Of unusual beauty. But up here, empty as a beggar's bowl. Consider her family. Daughter of a rug merchant? Will they not also shower you with wealth? While there were certainly worse ways for the candidates to have spent their days than myrrh baths and beauty treatments, none of the rumors of riches and glory stirred more excitement than the thought of gaining entry to the royal treasury itself. Whatever you choose for your one night with the king will be yours for the keep. Candidate, choose wisely. <laughs> He's done, not impressed. It matters not what impresses me. 
How is one to choose when they know not what impresses the king? Will you teach me? I will do far more than that. Come. A recent acquisition, one I believe the king would find most pleasing. Seat yourself on the stool and read the scroll. It is the Chronicles of the King, the Royal Diary. Through these doors, you no longer candidate. You are a servant. Remember the protocol. To approach uninvited is death. I read for the king? Alone? Like this? Daily entry 23. Egyptian wheat reserves were reported at half the normal levels due to a recent drought. Admiral Extes was honored for serving 20 years in the royal fleet. After a lengthy speech, he promptly killed over and died. <laughs> Twenty-five. Three herd of sheep were stolen from Dir Malmira, satrap of Medea. He requests that the crown send out the proper authority. And so Jacob, also a shepherd by trade, was sent off into the far, far off land where he came across the fair Rachel tending her father's sheep. He was smitten and went and rolled the stone from the well and watered her flock for her. Then Jacob kissed Rachel. He lifted up his voice and wept with joy. When Laban, Rachel's father, heard of this, he said to Jacob, should you serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Jacob said, I will serve you seven years for your daughter, Rachel. So Jacob served seven years tending Laban's sheep. And he only seemed but a few days for the love he had for her. And Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled. So Laban threw a great wedding feast. But in the dark of the evening, Laban brought his older daughter into Jacob. And behold, in the morning, it was Leah, not Rachel. Jacob was shocked. He said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve with thee for Rachel? Why then have you beguiled me? Why then have you beguiled me? I must admit that never before has such a tale been found on the pages of a royal diary. 
Here I expect to be lulled to sleep by a tedious report. Instead, I am beguiled by a love story. And how ends your tale? This Jacob, he is able to have his bride. He's able to have her? Uh, only after serving. Seven more years for her, my lord king. Believeth you in such love? Is it not the greatest commandment? No matter what god one serves. How do they call you? I serve Susa. Susa? No. Nothing good ever comes out of Susa. Look at me. Come. Come if you wish to see what I do. The Greeks, they have a god of similar form. His arms will hold a bow whose arrows, they say, are tipped with love. So much as arrows are tipped with poison, my lord. Sometimes. It's just hard to tell the difference. The symptoms are the same. Perhaps in another time, some other place. You will read to me again. You must tell no one of this night. My captain. Blame me not for this, my lord. But the princess have ordered us to begin bringing you candidates by the end of the week. You jest. I am in the middle of... At least you'll get it over with. Besides, these men might enjoy seeing some ladies around. No? They tell me you're called Esther now. Jesse. I'll talk. <clears throat> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were pagan names too. We're in good company. 
Their names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They were thrown into the furnace. But then what happened? <laughs> Come on. I found a way out. And there's a caravan leaving for Jerusalem tonight. So we can get out of this place. Escape. Just yet. I can't leave. What if... What if I am chosen? What if you're chosen one? What if you're a chosen queen? Look what they've done to us. What good could come of any of this? Perhaps instead of asking questions of our trials, our trials are meant to ask questions of ourselves. They cut me! I know we can't be what I hope. Today it begins. Each of you will be given one night with the king. We gather first to honor Mishgat of Persepolis. You enter as a peasant and leave a princess. allowing the candidates to keep their jury. Perhaps a hostback right is not the best idea, my lord. <laughs> you eat not for the candidate this evening. My throat is so... Your throat or your heart? It has only been a few days since you read for him. A few days is a thousand years. If Xerxes had found pleasure in me, surely he would have... You think a eunuch cannot know love? That before I was a crippled lover man, there was one that held my heart. What became of her? I know not. I never found the courage to return to face her again. She is beautiful, but delicate, Your Majesty. Just one more moment, please. May approach. How do they cool you? to honor Esther Azusa. You enter as a peasant and leave a princess. You can let go of my arm now. He will be the fortunate one to choose you. He will be the one to whom congratulations are due. Esther, my arm. Is 
The scroll is on the stool. You may begin whenever you are ready. Is there a problem? Did they not tell you I weary of this procession of candidates? I simply wanted someone to... Wait. You were the one who read to me before. You tried to beguile me with love stories. Did you not think I had the sense to see through your little parable? The arrogance to speak to me as if I was this Rachel, in need of help to look after my father's sheep. My lord, I meant no dishonor. And this is how you come to see me? Your only adornment before you are. One night with the king. It is, your majesty. Consider yourself of so little worth that I could purchase your love so cheap. But I was taught that when you visit a king, that rather than expect a gift, one should bring one to lay at his feet. This is my most valuable possession in the world. It is my past, my present, and my future. And all of it is yours. Some would call you foolish indeed, as they would call you Jacob. Of all commodities, love is the easiest and the most cheaply purchased. If it is for sale, my lord, it is not love. Even you, even you must have a price. I am neither a buyer. nor a seller of love. Suppose, my lady, a man offered you a more treasured gift. Say, her kingdom. Then it is yours. And you need not serve seven years to get it. Tell me, Esther, officers, who are you really? Tell me of your people. Teach me of your ways. My father taught me it takes the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. Then marry. <laughs> and we shall spend an eternity discovering this truth.
Jesus. E o Queen. Know you how many times I tried to come for you after that first night. How many evenings I spent counting the stars to keep my mind off of you. How many excuses I created just to avoid the other candidates. Fools, misfits, donkey-brained caricatures of men, you guaranteed me that Miss Gath would be chosen queen. Who is she? From whence does she come? Who are her people? There is little known about her, my lord. She is called Esther of Susa, an orphan. We should have stuck to our first plan and poisoned Haggai ourselves. Oh, poison? He did not, my lord. He is far too impetuous. Far too... You know about poison. Of course you do. You were once the royal cupbearers. Suppose, in theory, you wanted to poison another. Suppose... Suppose this other remained nameless, but was, in effect, one whom you had once vowed to protect. My lord, prince. Come, come. Don't look so distressed. We plot nothing here. My lord. against the crown. Crown! Aaron! Chosen ones! Allowed to return to their homeland. But do they go? Do they? The wonderful other ways of the Lord that he should have raised up my little Hadassah and made her queen. <laughs> have you told anyone our secret? Now, if you continue to call me Hadassah, it will no longer matter. <laughs> will you not join me in the palace and have your name to any post you desire? My Lord will take care of me. Do you take care of your Lord? his orders? Procure it not from the palace, so nothing can be traced back to us. The Jews have apothecaries. You over there. Why cannot a truce be arranged? A truce? That devil Mimikan is with me twice in a row. I fear losing you. I gave an oath to my father. He's the one I fear losing you, too. You must train. You'll be gone much in the coming months. Keep this for me. But it is yours, eh? Then be at peace. I always return for what is mine. Wilt thou sit there all day, my lord? I would 
they buy Belladonna off you? <laughs> Maybe they seek to poison someone. Very deadly, very quick. You sell them poison? A Jew sells poison to the king's food tasters? Have you any oh. idea for whom it might have been intended? <laughs> Please just allow me to see it. The scribe says it is for the queen's eyes only. to kill the king. The king should be notified at once, my lady. He and my Mukema are days right away at the training grounds. Then it would be better, my lady, if I sent for the captain of the guard to investigate. Who else is closest to the king? And Mantha. This is treachery. If my lady will permit, I myself will bring these two eunuchs to you. So I doubt the need for force. That would not be necessary. The king's new captain of the guard has gone to investigate. Time was of the essence, my lady. What of the eunuchs? They are being led to the gallows as we speak. I found this about their person. I interrogated them both. I am convinced they plotted alone. Make sure Mordecai's name is entered in the Chronicles. Certify it with my seal so he may be properly rewarded by the king. Please help yourself. Only a bite. Now I no longer ride the highways, my appetite suffers. Then may I assume that your fee for spying for me will be reduced? Well, my appetite, maybe less. That of my sons. My wife. Well, that may cost you more, my prince. Much. Much more. And what might you have done? <clears throat> I would save the king for last. As in the palace board game, rid yourself first of all of those pieces that are closest to him. One. By one. This is foolish. I go with or without you. There are too many rumors drifting through the palace and not enough answers. It hinges are well oiled. There must be plenty who use it. Lovers always find a way, my lady. The time has come, my brothers and sisters, where we must root out those amongst our men who seek our wreck and ruin. When a field of crops is defiled by disease, do we not set it on fire? Now I'm asked why I choose to speak against these foreigners and strangers in our midst.
Jew. I myself know many an individual Jew who I am proud to call friend. But put these individual Jews together, and what are Egypt? Assyria. Babylon in their wake! from here. Quickly. You want proof? Proof! Pull from the Royal Library! The great scheme of the Greeks and the Jews to conquer the world! For let me tell you, the Greeks and the Jews both live by the same evil doctrine. All men are created equal. Do you believe you are equal to a slave? Can you believe neither in the Jewish God nor in Greek democracy? But there are others in the palace that do. Let me now speak of Memukan. Prince. General. Arch traitor! Services rendered to King Darius. Pacification of the Babylonian provinces. Payments made to Haman the Agagite. Ask of Memukan why you allow the Greeks of Ionia to retain their democracy. Ask whose voice is loudest against the war today, and you will find out it is he! Common year. Thirteen years ago. My lady. Finishing. Please. Allow me. Done this for you. Thank you. Something must weigh heavy on my queen's heart. But I'd be kept up at this hour reading. My queen! <laughs> Is I there somewhere? I'm fine. Perhaps I should retire. <coughs> You're not scheduled at the palace for more than two weeks. You'll be wonderfully surprised if you not. Here, read this, my lord. <laughs> you do not appear to be a traitor member care. Return with me and I'll have it man to investigate Heyman's accusations immediately. Haman is my appointment. And we do need him more than we realize. Truly, ma'am. Yeah. At one moment you sulk, you say your name has been slurred, now you plead for your accuser. I have enough lives on my conscience. Chastise him mildly, and you will perform his duty well, and be more grateful to you for your leniency. Spoken like a true Persian, never judging a man before all the good and all the bad are waiting. Ride with me. So you burnt the evidence? Why not? Action will still be taken. Lest you forget, this Haman is now head of internal protection. And lest you forget, I'm still queen. 
Yes, but Queen's subject to an ancient protocol that no doubt Haman knows how to manipulate far better than you do. Go not by the main gate. I wish not for the Queen to be alerted to my coming. <laughs> ha! You must promise me that you will not reveal this to anyone. Any more such promises, and I shall have to take a vow of silence. Rusty old lover's gate. <laughs> I trust you used the much in your youth, Mim again. <laughs> Who do you think had it installed? <laughs> Have you? No, what is that supposed to mean? You look flushed. A busy morning? Not as busy as it could get. No visitors? You said to me, Johannes. It appears you have misplaced our necklace. I wonder if that is all you have misplaced. Perhaps your majesty would like to send for one of the concubines. Perhaps not. You look so much like your father. Sometimes I forget how different you truly are. Makes me wonder all the more why you feel such need to follow in his steps. Give her a few more nights. And then have her brought to me. You call that public tirade subtle? You mock me, Agagite. I need but report but once to the king of your arrogance. Your dreams of kingship die with me. You might be less harsh on the Jews, unless you make yourself a laughing stock. The Jews, my prince will be your chief weapon by which you attain power to the throne. Think, you plan to take the crown by force when the king is deep in Greece. What excuse will you use? Who attacks the land? Well, no one, actually. Unless, of course, you claim it's the Greek-loving Jews. Mimikin expects an apology that you predicted. Well, an apology is a cheap enough price to pay for a kingdom. Invite them, then you can to your estate. Presumably so, I can apologize to him. On the way, however, he will be ambushed. By whom? By my Jews, of course. Jews who slew him for being coupled with them as a traitor. And what, a Memekin's own guard? It's merely an apology. Perhaps you can suggest to Memekin that if you arrive with a large number, I might suspect he come to punish me. One or two guards my men can handle. And who will handle you? Who but you? My king. Prepare to die, great lover.
Ananthus men. Thank the gods you're unharmed, my lord. Come. My queen. Your Highness, blood has been spilled. You are needed at once. My Lord King. An accusation by a dispatch right. Why did you wait so long to inform anyone of Mantha's plot? Surely you don't. My lord, I had to play the traitor, to catch the traitor. Where are his witnesses, my lord? What were my motives? Let this Haman prove his words or be forever silent. But what would he have me show, my lord? There are no witnesses to plans forged in secret. You would not act like that, Mantha! And was it not even Admanta who stirred the crowd into demanding Queen Vashti's appearance, knowing she would not come? Oh, lies. That's lies. Lies! I stand in a crumbling house of lies! Remember before whom you plead. Plead for what? For your life, Admanta. Is it my foolish desire to believe these stories I hear? Or my glaring inability to perceive their mysteries? Perhaps you place them back upon the shelf to collect dust, forever truly completing them. Who is the one that gathers dust? I believed I was your Rachel. But it appears I am only Lear, and you serve time with me for another. <laughs> my lord. It's not what you think. Nothing is as I think anymore. Plots slither through the night. Trust. It decays like secret gates left to rust. But Mantra is carried to torture, even as we speak. This, Jacob, Rachel, they are no mere story to you. Give me some incentive to believe in who you really are. Give me some honor. For if it is truly the honor of kings to seek out truth in life. I am a man of scorn. But I will answer you. My lord, if you first answer me. Answer you what? Why did you summon Vashti? when you knew she would not come. I am king. And I need answer to no one. <laughs> After many days of torture, Admantha, the great Medean prince, finally confessed all and was dealt with according to the protocol of the land. For his brave and valorous services, Haman the Agagite was proclaimed a prince of the faith to inherit Admantha's house, wealth, prestige, and power. Pieces are falling into place. We have spoken of one by one. Sooth saying does not become you, Haman. Oh, my darling, I speak of the truth, not of stars. My burden I would not wish on any man. But the blood of my forefathers will be avenged. And the gods will smile down on our sons for our obedience. Then are you mad? This is your plan? It is not that our allies are unwilling, my lord, but they have not 
Fair to win. A storm has robbed the Phoenicians of a good part of their fleet. Carthage finds herself short in timber with which to complete our warships. Surely the fate of the Empire does not hinge on money. Are you ready to furnish it, then? No, not I, my lord. But I am aware of traitors within our borders that could. The Jews? We are not children. Nevertheless, the money may be raised by the confiscation of Jewish wealth and property. And the Jews will just hand it over without a fight? No, of course not. First, we must kill them all. Every last one of them. It is the only way to ensure they do not rise up and seek revenge. He speaks of women and children, my lord. Yes, women and children. I know. What is your solution? Or would you rather, my dear Memucan, the Greeks and the Jews unite and hand in hand murder us in our beds while we sleep? Is the past so mighty that we must destroy our brothers to be free of its grasp? No kingdom was ever so grand as the Jews owned King Solomon. He fought not one battle, toiled through not one war, but prospered upon the peace handed down by his father. Do not make void what your own father's death has purchased by picking back up the... Mind sword. your tone, General. I thirst you for warfare, when we can drink so deeply of peace. You speak of peace. Let us speak of the Jews. They would rather bow down to their own god than obey the lords of protocol. Their prophets even speak of a coming king. A king who will reign over all kings and set all men free. Is that not the very essence of democracy, my dear Memokan? I do believe, under your guidance, we are undone. If we are undone, we are undone from within, indeed. March upon Greece, if you wish, but you march with no general in your lead. Then it has not yet been signed into law. Not as yet, my lady. Perhaps guilt stirs men too hotly at times, and they seek the salve of the law to ease the burning. And what would you have me do? I cannot seek him in the library unless summoned. If you arrived first, then he, in effect, would be seeking you, would he not? How came you past my guard? I demanded none use the library this night. I seek that which you seek, my lord. Truth. Perhaps the truth of what exists between us? I have come on matters of state. Matters of state? I see. And what matters of state might that be? You desire more perfumes? You request more condiments? Surely as queen of the kitchen you need not await me here. You know as well as I how quickly word travels throughout the palace. Especially when murder is involved. You are... You are learned, well-read. Offer me a story that answers my dilemma. I have never pretended with you. Never pretended? Think you not that I see Memucan strings dangling above your head even now? You care more for these Jews than you do for me. Do you inquire of my burdens? Do you offer me solutions? No. You just complain. As Vashti did. Away from me and come before me no longer. No matter what pretense you seek or your fate shall be worse than Vashti. I do love you. Love has failed me. Knowledge has failed me. Thus, I bind myself to the protocol of my fathers and to my empire. By the next moon, I leave for war. And whatever my fate, it shall no longer be shared with you. your favorite reading, and though it may no longer bear the story of love, it bears that of one Mordecai the Jew, 
one of whom you wish to destroy saved your life. And you never even honored him for it. The casting of the lot. The poor. It has determined upon which day all the Jews of the kingdom will be slain. This day is to be the 13th day of the month of Adar, according to the calendar of the Jews. Prince! The annihilation of a people can only be authorized by one who bears the signet of the king himself. were sent into all the land to slay and annihilate all the Jews on the 13th of Adar some six weeks hence, both young and old, men, women, and even children, and to plunder all of their possessions for the sake of the crown. Scribe insists that all is dependent upon you, my queen. Dependent upon me? My queen might wish to go before the king and intercede for those that have no other hope. My lady. Have you forgotten your protocol? To approach the king unsummoned is death. Perhaps in court, but surely you can visit him in private. In his chambers. Surely I cannot. How obedient I have been. I walk before you with a loyal heart. And now I stand in the hour of trouble precisely because of my obedience. I beseech you, Father. Let there be another way. Rise up a deliverer and let this pass. Let this pass. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Cry unto Israel that her warfare is finished, that her iniquity is removed. The everlasting neither faints nor is weary. His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and power to the weak. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fail. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Lord, we wait on thee. Renew our strength. the great prince you throw yourself to honor the great prince Haman kneel I said kneel stop why do you not kneel I kneel before my king I abase myself only before the God of my fathers what's his name this God the great I am, the one true God, the maker of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. A Jew. Mordecai ben Yair. Mordecai. I shall name my prize pig after you. Perhaps I may give you other reasons to remember my name. You will remember mine. For this! Move on! Why 
What good did that do? You still ended up on the ground like the rest of us. But I did not kneel. Come now. You are a mere three days from being handed a kingdom. We must not let one Jew rob us of our joy. That is not good enough. Then seek permission to honor the king's departure with a public execution of a rebel. Execution of a Some rebel. of your authority Some over those that remain. Over the over those a gallows. Fifty cubits high with Mordecai. Right, right. Mordecai. disturbs me. You may be of assistance. I am most pleased, my lord, for I too desire your counsel on a matter. A certain man has rendered great service to me. He has received many honors amongst his people, but he once saved my life. I feel despite everything, full recognition has not yet been given him. What think you shall be done for this man in whom the king delights to honor? Let a royal robe be sent for. One his majesty has donned in public. And a horse. On whose head a royal crest is set. Deliver them to... one of the noblest princes of the face. So that he can array the man in whom the king delights. And then... Parade this man through the streets proclaiming, Thus shall it be done to the man in whom the king delights to honor. Most excellent proposal. Go yourself now and do all you have suggested. My lord. To a one Mordecai. The scribe who sits within the king's gates. Mordecai. The Jew. My lady. And who is this honored man? A scribe. A Jewish scribe who claims to have saved the king's life. I should think he would be honored by such a privilege given by the king. Honored? The prestige of Persia is at stake. What would it be said of your husband, the king, that he commands his highest prince to lead a Jew through the streets? A Jew, my lady! And how is a Jew any different than you or I? They are our enemy. They must be destroyed. They may be your enemy, but not mine. From the way that you defend them, one might almost think. One might think what? My prince. One might think that is all my lady. Make your way for Mordecai the Jew! Make your way! 
out. My queen, I bring you word for Mordecai. You've run out of time. When the king leaves for Greece tomorrow, he would appoint Haman as his regent. It is our last chance to stop this edict of death. He made me vow to speak his words. You will indeed risk your life if you go before the king. But do not think that if you keep silent, your position will save you alone from this edict. For if you keep silent, deliverance for the Jews will arise from some place else, but you will surely perish. Who knows whether you have come to the palace for such a time as this. He said to give you this. Tell Mordecai to assemble the Jews. Ask them to fast and pray. I will do the same. And in the morning, arrange for me a litter. I will array myself as queen and go before the king unsummoned. Even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Servants of the crown. Today we embrace our destiny to reign and rule the world over and stand against the Greeks and all who would rob us of our glory. Our crown, quickly. The letter will be here any moment. No leader is coming. What? I do not know what you plan, but. The king leaves for the outpost within the hour. I have not time to wait out this rain. I am not going to allow you to kill yourself. No. Please tell me he would not. What possible insurance do you have? He would lower his scepter to spare your life. You do not go into a bedroom of a man. You go into all of a king. This is not you against him. This is you against protocol. You against the empire. Then I, I go as David did before Goliath and the Philistines. Those are just stories, Esther. Do you hear me? Just stories. Know you. What I love most about the story of David and Goliath. David's victory came not because he fought well, but because he believed well. Thus I leave you on this day, your regent in my absence, Lord Haman, Prince of the Faith. It is my will that each of you obey him in every way exactly as you would regard your king.
the summons she comes before the king. She does. Protocol not broken. Yes, protocol has been broken. Ah! We have not time to waste. What did he say to your request? The timing, the faces, I could not ask it. Not there, not in course. What then? Do we perish? We have but one last chance. You must help me prepare. A king may lower his scepter to whoever he wishes. has all but been ripped from your hands. This Esther has dishonored you more than Vashti ever could. See not you now how she has trapped you. Inviting us to a banquet to hear her request. If you go, the people will deem you to be a pawn. If you refuse, coward, there is but one way to proceed. The mail to your satisfaction, my lord. The night draws late. Once more, I ask for your petition, my queen. My petition. you allow me to finish a story. One that I began many nights ago. The story of Jacob, my lord, does not finish with Mary and Rachel, for they go on to have 12 sons. And like these, Twelve pillars that surround us, 
they became the pillars of a people. Surely. Surely you do not delay an army only to finish a children's tale. Find favor in your sight. Let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. You demand of me your life and that of your people? My dear girl, I know not of your people. You have yet to tell me who they are. Had we been merely sold as slaves, I would have held my tongue. This same and wanted our blood, my blood, the blood of Jacob, your Jacob. Your Jacob was given a new name, Israel. As you was I. You, Esther, did you? Not Esther. My lord. Hadassah, Bat Abihel, daughter of the tribe of Benjamin, child of the Most High God. Never have I heard a more pathetic story in my entire life. She is no Jew. She is another Vashti. Seems it not convenient to you. An army marches, and suddenly she is a Jew. Oh. Esther is a Jew. Your Vashti but protested the notion of war. This queen seeks to counter the very authority of your rule. A Jew? If such were true. Why did she hide it till now? Pray, do tell us. The Almighty has indeed ordained that my words speak not truth unto you. At least allow my heart. For this, which I have offered you, my most precious in all the world, the very identity etched within me. But is something supposed to be happening here? The stars. Do you not see them? Do you not see them? A mockery. Perhaps not how you had hoped it would end. Imagined you that I would beg. Think you I will beg? Beg for my life? Beg like my forefather Agag before your sword. Would you like me to beg for you? Life, 
You are a lady of mercy. Spare me. I beg for forgiveness! Spare me! Spare me! Kill! Would he also assault the Queen? My wife! Why am I not in my house? Rona has informed me that the gallows pole stands in Heyman's yard, even as we speak. Apparently intended for one Mordecai, the Jew. Hang him on it. What made you come back? I saw... I saw the stars. <laughs> Thus, with one faithful act, has a new generation redeemed the time of centuries past and stepped into their destiny. On this day, I give you your new prince and master of audiences, Mordecai ben -Jaya. On the day appointed for their destruction, all Jews shall have the right to protect themselves and shall be entitled to take all the property of their attackers. And I send forth this story, enjoining all to keep the day of feasting and gladness, a celebration to be passed on and retold through every generation, to be known as Purim, for the casting of the poor, that determined its time. While we continue onward in the face of a world filled with uncertainty, we can rejoice, for hidden within its mysteries is the honor of a king. Thus dictated, I order this decree sent out under the great seal of Mordecai, Prince of Persia, a Jew.
such a time as this. 